I'm going to talk about win-win-wins. That's, that's a win for the retailer, a win for the brand, and a win for the shopper, because that's what we're in business for, is to put something in the hands of the shopper. And I'd like to start in a fairly strange place with Florence Nightingale. Florence Nightingale, this is a famous picture, the Lady of the Lamp. Um, Crimea, 1854. We drove past the hospital on the way here this morning that she left for the Crimea from. And when she got there, she found that ten times as many people were dying um, from other things. In fact, the safest place in, in, in the war was to be actually in the front line because you, you had, a, a, you had a, a, an 80%, 90% better chance of, of, of surviving there than you actually had when you were in the hospital. But she didn't, she didn't actually get that message across because she was pretty and, 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 and she had a great PR agency. She, she was a statistician. She invented these pie charts, and she took the pie charts back, and she showed people the facts. She put the facts in front of them, and eventually a lot was changed in terms of the, the way that, that hygiene matters were managed in hospitals, and, and, and she has an enduring legacy. And in 1859, she was the first female member of the Royal Statistical Society, which must have been quite something in those days, and was recognised as one well of the mistakes. Now, a law is something that happens consistently wherever we look. The law of gravity was, was obviously was around us all the time. It was invented, um, a bit like America was discovered. It was there all the time, but you know, Columbus discovered it. Um, Isaac Newton discovered gravity, and that's a law, and, and no one has yet seen an apple falling upwards. There is, are, however, laws in marketing as well, typically. And one of those laws in marketing is the law of double jeopardy, um, Ehrenberg, probably know about him. And he said, as you increase your availability, as you increase the number of people who buy, so your loyalists go up in greater proportion. So the more people buy, the more likelihood you are to find that some of them are going to be, be loyal, and more of them will be loyal. And actually, the verse is also true. So if you lose your distribution, uh, then, then you lose your loyalists at the same time. And uh, this is some work from the States. You won't be able to see it. I should add, by the way, that we are being videoed here and, and warts and all will be available on YouTube later, and as will the presentations um, available to you. Um, and if we just look up here, um, there's a whole range of categories, all-purpose cleaners, uh, where the total brand buyers go down by 1%, the total loyals went down by 2%. Canned tomatoes, buyers up, loyalists up. It's a consistent picture wherever you look, but... It's not like that now. Um, the first white paper that we produced, uh, which was in 2009, uh, featured uh, a lot of work from Dunhumby. And the conclusion they came to was that there is a linkage, a serious deep linkage between increased price promotions and decreased brand loyalty. And some areas, loyalty was almost non-existent. They instance, I think, health and beauty as a main area for that. So what's changed in the last 10 years that has changed that law into something totally different. Now, the thing to remember is that there are actually now two markets. 40% of all goods or more, and in some areas, 80% um, of all goods are actually now being sold um, at a discount, certainly in health and beauty, the average is 60%. There's a one on price discount, where 26% of the shelf space in the store is chasing 40% of the demand. And the one between discounts where products move slowly and they're there in good stock. And you need to have a strategy for building both. Somebody has to have a strategy for building both because the retailers are now starting to take a real interest in moving through those fallow areas. So promotions shouldn't actually be bad for you. They used to be good. They used to deliver for you. They used to do things for you. And people used to use them. Uh, they took over from price discounting via couponing in the mid-90s because it was a convenient easy, didn't have a lot of costs. So, um, and there are times when penetration goes up, volume sale goes up, and trial goes up. So why actually has this ended up actually destroying brand values? And I'd like to talk to you about, we got to this point, giving you a lot of facts, and then saying, actually, there are some things in Don, Donald Rumsfeld's eyes, there are no, unknown unknowns. There are things we don't know. There are lots of things that we know that we know, or we think we know that we know, and there are things that we know that we don't know. And, and what I'm going to talk to you about is some unknown unknowns. And I'm going to go on to say, 
and we can then do things about these unknown unknowns. Some, some facts. Store availability is very poor. 17% of shoppers are very concerned. These are IGD figures, but IGD also says that store availability for product is 98.2%. They don't attempt anywhere well I've seen to try and rationalise the difference between those two figures. Research that we've done with FastMap, 70% of shoppers, 77% of shoppers report going to stores and finding no stock for advertised promotions. And at Christmas last year, 26.7% of people said they could not buy what they wanted. Into grocer. 48% said they didn't buy at all. 11% said they bought a substitute product. The remainder bought from another store. So they actually left the store to go and buy something. And Popeye Research says that the largest reason for non-POP placement is that there isn't any stock there to advertise or, to, or, or that it's going to advertise. And only 69% of POP on average can be placed. There is a linkage between all of those. But first, what does it mean, those figures? We ask people... What would you do if you walked into a store and you couldn't find what you were told, the offer that you were told you could get? And 15% of those people said they were irritated. Now, you'd be irritated, I'm irritated when that sort of thing happens. And they said they'd be likely to defect to another brand. And actually, the same number, but great, sorry, greater number, um, said the same about the store, that they would be likely to defect. And we are seeing that evidence in the way that stores are actually having to spend a lot more to get more people to the door. In fact, research that has been done very recently shows that, that in the next two years, 60% of all store marketing <coughs> revenue will be geared to get in new people. There aren't any new people there being, being born or the shoppers are... So, so what they're doing is they're getting people back that they could have had before. And so there's a win-win here for everyone. If you can find a solution for turning promotions back, sales discounts back, into what they were in the first place. And we've analysed 1,000 um, promotions across 24 categories, looking at the way in which those promotions perform by store. And you find, and I, this is why I, I, you know, I kind of a lack of a pointer, since I can't actually reach up to the screen, is going to be a bit of a problem. But if you, if you look at the top blue line, uh, and, you, and we walk our, ourselves just a bit along the, the bottom here, this is showing increasing depth of cut. So that goes up to 50%. And as you go to 50%, you find that the best performing stores will go up on average from, obviously, zero uplift and zero, up to just under 10 times where what we're using is a measure of the average sales before and the average sales during the promotion, so average weekly sales. Um, then you've got the bad stores. These are the stores that don't perform very well at all. In fact, they hardly move. And then the average between the two, which is what you see, gets much closer to the poor as these sales, as, as the discount goes up. And what that means, of course, is, is that as discount increases, stores find it increasingly harder to keep customers supplied with stock. And the, if you could get the um, stock through from the back to the front, and, and let's not blame the stores here, let's talk about supply chain, from the back office in the depot through to the people who really want it, then you could actually get... If volume uplift is what you wanted, twice as much for half the price. So, a key driver to loyalty and profit loss is the consistent inability of retailers to supply the core stores. And out of a total spend last year of 41.2 billion, 3 billion pounds that people spend on discounting meets empty shelves and actually drives people away from the brand they're supposed to be supporting. So, you know, you go in there, you haven't got, you can't find the product, 15% of them will just go straight down the aisle and buy something else. And that's what's happening there, is that instead of it being, uh, you know, completely passive, it's a, it's a really active driver of people to the competitors. And that is out of a UK advertising market of around 19 billion. <coughs> just imagine how much more you could do if you could sort out that 3 billion. 
And one of the things that we have done in, in, in looking at this analysis is to understand that the stores that suffer the most are those that have a high percentage of the core customers. The way that stores are laid out is they're all the same if they're the same size. So, you know, if you've got a store here in, in, in the middle of London, it's got, you know, X number of rows of champagne. If you've got a, uh, that, that's probably a bit of a, there are some changes that are made, but, and, and then you go to the store in Merthyr Tidville, uh, you know, it will be roughly the same. Unfortunately, however, there are a lot more people walking through the door to, to buy in one store in, in, in central London than, than, than the other. And you're expecting the supply chain to respond to, to not to, to demand, but just the supply. So if, if, if when people walk in, they can't buy something, then you can't give them any more, you can't replenish it. Good performers build brands over time. So if you look at, it, at this chart here, three price promotions, the good performers show steadily increasing sales and not the pattern that, that we, we all think that we see, which is that, that actually if you do lots of promotions, you necessarily get a decline. So, you know, there is a lot in this effect that, that you can learn from. And the core difference is to improve the store's ability to supply, uh, improving the stock cover in the store, not in the depot. Um, for those of you who, again, may not be familiar with the way that sales works, they say the uplift last time was this, I want you to buy that. They put half in the depot, half in the store, then half in the depot goes out very slowly, much too slowly to meet the, the overnight increase in demand up to 10 times that, that, that they can be seen. And uh, <clears throat> the more you discount, the faster your market will defect. And even discounts like 20% cause an issue. 